All right, how's it guys? Um, this video is going to be uh, an overview of what gear I take uh, on a long weekend or a, or a two, two overnighter um, uh, trip into the bush. Uh, this will be a bit of a rundown on the specific gear that I take um, for a summer trip to the tops. Um, we're going to be doing some um, some fairly long Ks on this trip. I'm actually taking a mate with me on this one. So um, uh, we're going to hit it pretty hard and um, climb a few a uh, few hundred feet, a few hundred meters up to the tops. Um, so yeah, this will be um, yeah just a rundown on all the gear that I take. So this is this is the man cave, or the hunting section of the man cave. Um, over here, I've got it sort of set up. Um, I got got all my clothes, all my hunting clothes, and that set up here. Uh, over here, I just got some shelves set up. So the bag section, just got a few selections of bags that I use. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'll just come back here a bit. I use that corner there uh, as all my hunting stuff. And then over here, moving across to the battery charging station. Um, yeah, pretty standard. Start moving across, got the old 303, just doing a bit of work on that. Got to put a new uh, swivel attachment onto it and put my um. <coughs> Put my uh, sling on there. Uh, Ruben down as the bow and arrow that my missus got me for Christmas, and uh, a few tools on the wall for working on my stuff. But yeah. Anyway, I'll I'll start getting start getting my gear ready, um, and I'll put it into a big pile, and then go through exactly what I use um, on my overnighter trips. All right, so uh, so here's a. Uh, uh, a list of um, of gear, uh, just a checklist of things that I take with me into the bush. Um, if you haven't got a list, I highly recommend it. It's taken me way too many years and too many times of going into the bush, forgetting my knife, forgetting, oh, I don't know, all manners of things, bits and pieces. So I probably should have clued up to this a long time ago, but now I'm onto it. And um, you, you won't regret it. If you start making a list, you can tweak it all the time. Um, and it just takes all the hassle out of organising for a long weekend. Takes that stress out of, oh, have I got this? Have I got that? You know, you drive out of the, out of your house, and the only thing you can think of for the next five minutes as you're driving away is, what have I forgotten? So this takes all the stress out of it. Um, and this is just, I've just got, just got it set out with our personal clothing, shopping, uh, sleeping kit, uh, cooking kit, shooting kit, survival pouch, uh, essential items luxury items and camera kit um, and all the various items listed underneath there um, and I'll just modify this as I go along um, to what I need um, but yeah this is this is the basis of what I use um, and also with that um, if anybody's looking if anybody wants to know exactly what's in this list here I'm happy to give it out um, just leave a comment in the uh, comment section and I'm um, happy to go over any kind of bits of information that um, are specific to any area that you want to know about. Um, but I won't go through it just now. Alright, so I've managed to um, get everything laid out that I'm going to take on this trip with me. Um, it's all laid out here on the ground. So I'm just going to go through this um, sort of section by section. Uh, I'll start out with the clothing. Uh, right, so starting out with the clothing, um, obviously a good pair of boots, good pair of boots is essential uh, for when you're out in the bush, there's no point in skimping on boots, you're just going to end up hurting your feet, rolling your ankle, um, or just wearing them out after um, maybe one or two seasons, you're better off just to go with a good set of boots right off the bat. Um, a pair of gaiters, um, gaiters are a sort of a, a funny one. Um, in terms of necessity, these are a pair of uh, Stony Creek um, in the camo pattern here. These are quite good. Um, do you need them? Mm, debatable. Uh, if you're going into areas where there's lots of Madagari and Spaniard grass, you probably do. Um, if you're going into areas where you're doing a lot of river crossings, um, sort of like a lot of bush stalking, no, you don't need them, but you might want to go for a pair of putties, which is like a rubber wetsuit material type thing that just just covers the top of your boot 
um, and just stops like leaves and crap getting into the top. Uh, yeah, the gaiters themselves are only for sort of like on the tops, high country stuff. I like wearing them, but people might not um, necessarily need to take them. A uh, couple of pairs of socks. So I, got, I take three pairs of socks with me. Um, these are the Bridgedale Summits. These are a really good pair of socks. I think these retail for about 50 bucks a pair. Um, I think they're Merino from memory. Um, and then I've got a couple of uh, um, other pair of socks. These are just, uh, I think, even Katmandu or Matt Pack ones. Um, the reason being is that I always wear two pairs of socks in these specific boots, in the Alpine boots. Um, it's a much comfier uh, feel, and, and, and especially when you're doing long Ks or up steep mountains, I find that two pairs of socks are better. And then I take an extra pair for in camp. Um, nothing better than taking off wet socks having a good fresh pair of um, socks to put on when you're around camp. Um, a pair of thermal bottoms. These are Icebreaker Merino thermal bottoms. I can't stress enough how good Merino stuff is compared to uh, polyprop stuff um, or any of the other thermal layers. I know there's a whole lot of other sort of thermal underlayer stuff, but for me I've found that Merino works the best and I just, I, I, I won't use anything else. Um, normal pair of shorts, these are just a pair of work shorts. Um, this bag down here, I just take a, um, this is a, like a waterproof rucksack top link, uh, made by Tatonka. And I use that to put um, any extra pairs of clothing that I might not be using during the day um, in terms of uh, extra layers like a rainproof jacket and uh, a down um, jacket like this one here, but I'll get to that in a second. So we've got a merino, another merino uh, thermal layer, thermal top. Um, this is a um, micro fleece, micro fleece swazzy uh, singlet. I highly recommend the micro fleece um, for this specific layer, um, being that it's warm, it gives you that extra layer over the chest um, doubled up with the merino th uh, thermal layer underneath. Um, it's a really good combination just for when you're stalking in the bush or even on the tops. Um, I find that that's more than adequate. It's nice and light and the good thing about that is it's layers so you can take things on and off as you feel. <coughs> this is a um, Mac pack um, down jacket. Uh, this is an absolute brilliant piece of kit. Reason being is that you can use this <coughs> in your sleeping bag to give you another, I'd say probably six or seven degrees, maybe even more, 10 degrees um, in your sleeping bag at night, which means you can take a smaller sleeping bag. It also doubles obviously if you're glassing and it's cold, wet, windy, you can put that on, <coughs> layer it up with a waterproof jacket. This is a uh, Mac pack. Um, waterproof outer shell. It's the Gore-Tex layer or the Mac Packs version of the Gore-Tex layer. Um, seam, sealed, glued, stitched, it is all uh, completely waterproof. So awesome piece of kit, those two combined. The best thing that I like about this puffer jacket is it stacks inside this bag um, and it's just a really good weight and uh, space saving uh, piece of kit. So. Um, it's taken me quite a few years to get to this stage to know um, that it's not worth taking big, bulky stuff. Um, you might as well pay the money to get good gear. It saves heaps of weight. It means you can carry more animal, more uh, more meat out if you're shooting the animals. Um, moving on to a set of gloves, just a normal set of. These are um, uh, Under Armour uh, gloves. Just a good pair of gloves for uh, glassing you know in the afternoons or first thing in the morning um, you just need that extra layer on your hands I reckon um, and here's a neck warmer this is a merino icebreaker neck warmer um, another really essential piece of kit in my mind it just takes that chill off around your neck you can bring it right up and put it on good thing about this you can carry it down there as you're walking um, you stop and glass, you don't have to get anything out of your pack if things start to get really nasty, you can just bring it up like that. 
and it keeps the wind chill off your face. It makes a big difference <coughs> for the weight that it is. Um, I just keep it on me all the time. Good thing about Merino is that when it's really hot, it's it's quite breathable and it doesn't make you get too hot. So you find that with Merino, you're not having to strip it all off all the time. You can still wear it when it is hot. Um, and then I just take an extra uh, fleece shirt. This is just the Stony Creek uh, normal fleece bush shirt that I take with me uh, for around camp. If all of this other stuff gets wet when I'm hunting, I know that at least I've got a, a fleece that will be sitting in my waterproof bag in my pack for when I get back to camp. Um, it's pretty essential, I think. It's just a bit of a survival thing, if anything else. Right. <coughs> right, so I'm moving on to uh, my pack and my sleeping kit. Um, first off, I've got the this is the Mac Pack. Uh, what what is it? Um, I forgot the actual the model of this one, but it's the Mac Pack. It's got a thick canvas uh, waterproof hard outer shell, which I find is the best way to go rather than the really lightweight nylon bags. Um, when you're hunting, especially bush stalking, um, or even on the tops in the Madagari and things, we do put our gear through a hell of a lot of stress. Um, and I have had bags rip on me before, and so this is the reason why I went with the harder uh, material on the outside, and I sacrificed a bit of weight for that exact reason, so that the bag would last the distance when out in the bush. Um, and I think it's paid off in dividends. Um, it's got a really good back frame. Um, nice and lightweight, lots of airflow around here. This is all uh, like an air mesh type thing. It's really sturdy. It's got two aluminium poles. That one comes down here, one comes down here, and the uh, harness system is all based around those two poles there. Um, it's got a good uh, waist belt here. I've modified this bag slightly. I've put an extra strap that goes around here so that I can attach these side pouches um, as I'm walking, and if I don't want to. Uh, take my pack off all the time, I can put essential items in the side pockets here like food, bullets in here, uh, head torch, uh, uh, EPIRB and just bits and pieces so that I'm not always going to take my pack off if I need, don't need to. Um, and another good feature about this pack um, is it's got a double entry system. It's got a top entry system here like your normal tramping packs will where you open this up and you can get in from the top. But as a hunter, this is probably one of the better functions we've got is that it opens right up to this big pouch. Um, I find it's easier just to open this up, spread it all out when I'm getting meat in and out um, and all my camping and equipment and things. I'm not necessarily too worried about uh, waterproof, waterproofness because these, this pack here has got quite a good like a, a strap down system where it is pretty much waterproof. I'd rather have the access in the top um, rather than a completely waterproof bag. So I went with that way. And it's got a compartment down the bottom here to stick all my uh, sleeping equipment. So moving on to that, um, we've got a sleeping bag here, like I said before, this is the MacPax uh, Epic 600. Um, it is a slightly lighter weight than some of the guys that are down here uh, doing, doing big winter trips um, for tar and chamois on the tops. Um, I went this way because I can use my uh, my puffer jacket in conjunction with this and a thermal layers on my bottom and a pair of socks I find that's warm enough when it gets down to about minus 10 degrees. Um, anything lower than that and I would I would be going for um, a substantially larger bag, you'd probably want to go with a thousand bag. Um, but I, I couple that up also in the snow with the XP down mat and I find that that has got me through. I've been pretty cold some nights, but um, it's done the job. Uh, getting on to the, to the tent, um, as I mentioned before, this is the Nature Hike Mongo 2. Really good tent, I won't go too much into that. If there's anything you guys want to know about this, leave a comment in the section below, and, um, and I'll go over things a bit more in detail if you want to. So moving on to uh, my survival kit um, and equipment. First up, I've got 
uh, GPS. This is the uh, Garmin version, one of the earlier, uh, this is the Colorado 300. Um, I haven't used this a hell of a lot, to be honest. Um, some people love them, some people don't. I tend to use a map a lot of the time. Um, batteries run out pretty fast. But I will use it on the tops uh, in heavy fog conditions if you're trying to navigate your, own, your way around some bluffs or in, if you're in a heavy, dense uh, bush situation where you're not too sure which catchment you're in or which stream you're in it's, and it's harder to get um, navigational marks of um, some of the landmarks that are around you I will use this. Um, in this specific situation I'm going into the tops, it's going to be uh, cloudy and there could be a chance of fog coming in so I'm going to take this on this trip. Spare pair of batteries. Uh, EPIRB, this is uh, the EPIRB that I take, nice lightweight it's the ACR Rescue Link Plus. Um, I'm pretty sure that most of the hunters in New Zealand and fishermen in New Zealand use this specific type of, um, of EPIRB. It's a great little one, nice and light. Picked up off trade me for I think 350 bucks. So that's that. Uh, next up we've got the first aid kit. Uh, I won't go into detail what's in the first aid kit. A basic rundown of, of it is a triangular bandage, I've um, got some codeine in there, I've got a pair of scissors to cut down some smaller bandages for wrapping up your feet if you get blisters or um, any cuts or anything like that. Uh, there's some Sevlon in there, some antiseptic cream. Um, what else is there? There's uh, a couple other bits and pieces in there like um, little plasters and, um, and that's about it. You can't fit too much in there but um, this is always evolving this kit. Pack of the fire lighters in here, I've got some, uh, some small small, um, just your normal sort of fire lighters for, um, that you use around the house. I've got some denser ones that are kind of like uh, fuel saving ones that they, they, they last a little bit longer. Um, they're a little bit more dense and packed in and they'll burn for quite a lot longer. Um, a little bit harder to get started and I've also got just a little candle in there as well. Moving on, a um, couple of bits of rope, a little bits of paracord. These come in handy all the time for all manner of reasons. Um, I have used them to lower my pack down banks, or a head of a deer, or um, I use it quite a lot to hang up a corded out deer, or hang a whole deer up if I need to. If I need to get a whole deer up and hang it overnight. Um, all sorts of stuff. I mean, you can use it for fishing. Um, there's, there's, there's an endless amount of, of um, ways you can use. There's these small amounts of rope, but I wouldn't recommend taking anything larger. That's a four meter length there. That's about all you need. Um, got a compass and a map, no need to go too much into that. A couple of bits of rubber for all our fails. I've got two ways I can uh, start a fire, the fire lighters and the rubber. Um, waterproof mattress, a lighter and uh, a flint stick. Um, no need to stress the importance of being able to light a fire in the bush. Um, I know it's kind of, you know, cheating a little bit, taking taking so much uh, fire lighting equipment, but um, uh, I'm not going up there for bushcraft. This will be in a survival situation where if I need to light a fire, I know that I can light a fire. I've got many ways to do it, um, and I don't know about you, but I spent a couple of nights in the bush um, when you're not supposed to, and it's not very fun when you're cold and wet and it's pissing down in the uh, stormy conditions. So only thing you want to do is get a fire going. It's hard enough to get tinder in the bush um, in damp situations, let alone if it's in a storm and there's wind blowing. So just by having um, even just one piece of rubber can mean the difference between having a comfortable night out or even dying in the worst case scenario. Um, a whistle, very important. Um, headlamp, this is the S, as I said before, the SEO 7R. Brilliant headlamp, I, I haven't found one that's better than this yet. Nice and lightweight. Um, the battery itself has um, sort of diminished over time um, and I've got a spare battery for that. Make sure those two are charged. On this trip being summer um, and on the tops, I've just got some uh, possible strength Euro Guard and a little bit of sunscreen and some sunnies. I don't know about you, but I cannot go onto the tops on a sunny day without having sunglasses. So I'll move on to my cooking gear. 
all the water, gas canisters, usually I'd only take one gas canister, um, but we're going for two nights and there's two of us, I just want a little bit of a backup, so both of these are about half full, so I'm kind of thinking that I might run out of one, just take the second one just in case. I've got a cup, um, with this cup I've marked on the inside and the outside actually, uh, 250 mils. Reason being is that you get, then you can have a way of measuring how much water you need for your backcountry cuisine. Um, a lot of them are 500 mil, so two cups of water. If you're not too sure on exactly how much of a cup, because they can get a bit soggy, um, I've just put a little mark on there. Um, this is a pretty highly debated um, issue or, or subject, is um, the cooking equipment. There's a lot of guys out there that take jet boils or um, the MSR, I think they're the pump uh, gas ones. Um, to me, I haven't actually had one before, but I haven't had the need to. Um, I take this, it's a little kettle with a lid, and that's more than adequate and has been for a number of years. I've never had the need to get anything else. It's nice and light, um, and I couple that with this Covia, Covia uh, small, I don't know if you can see that, it's just a small uh, sort of four winged gas top. Um, that together with a gas can um, and I've got a little pot grabber here so that when that heats up you can use that to get it on and off, um, has been absolutely fine. So I've had no need to, to change that up. I've got a little spork here that I use for, um, for these packets. A knife, one knife only. I know guys take two or three knives. I don't find the need to take more than one knife. This is more than adequate. This is just a small, I think it's a three inch blade. This is a buck, uh, I forgot the model of it. But um, as long as it's sharp, I sharp, always sharpen it before I go. Um, or I take a sharpener with me. Um, but that's more than adequate, you don't need a big knife unless you're doing bushcraft. If you just want to gut a deer down and cut a bit of food up, that's all you need. One bag for rubbish and a sharpener. So moving on to food, just got a bag of condiments here uh, with some tea bags, a bit of coffee, some sugar, Cajun seasoning uh, and a toothbrush in there and also couple that up with a few um, um, soups. I like to take soup with me instead of, um, I don't drink that much coffee or tea but I do drink it with a bit of soup. Um, and then I've got uh, for breakfast some porridge, some little porridge sachets. For lunch I'll have uh, beef jerky, um, like trail mix nuts and things, um, maybe peanut butter, butter sachets, um, little muesli bars, can of tuna, that kind of thing. Um, and at night I'll have a backcountry cuisine, that's all I take with me. It's more about convenience and weight than anything else. Um, on these long extended trips, or sorry, these, these sort of long walking trips where you're going to be carrying a lot of weight, um, I just try and stay away from things like sausages, mince, whole onions, potatoes, that kind of thing. It's just it's just completely uh, not worth it in my, uh, for my scenario. Um, so I'll take a couple of those. I haven't got all my lunch stuff with me, but that'd be another maybe a kg worth of stuff and it might come to about that big. All right, moving on to shooting equipment. Ballistics drop chart, um, a must in any sort of medium to long range shooters um, kit. Won't go into that too much. There's heaps and heaps of videos on ballistic drop charts. I use it, I swear by it, but I'm not a proficient long range shooter. I haven't shot over 500 meters. I'm getting there. It's a long process. Anyway, a pair of binoculars. <laughs> These ones here are an old, really old pair of uh, Simmons, Simmons, 
Master Series 8x42. Um, to be honest, these are a piece of shit. <laughs> I wish I had the money to buy some more. Um, if I could get some brand new Swarovskis or Leikers, I would. But um, for now, I'm just going to have to settle for um, these old pair here. Which, oh, that's okay. Uh, a rangefinder, a must-have on the tops, I think. Uh, rangefinder, this is uh, the Nico Sterling, fairly cheap one. I think it was about three or four hundred dollars, um, but does job pretty good. Um, yeah, must-have for me. Oh. Earplugs, because I'm shooting um, a muzzle brake, I take earplugs with me. It's just a must-have if you don't have a silencer. Um, bullets, <coughs> magazine. I take eight rounds with me, it's usually my standard. Um, gun, I've got this is the Tika T3 um, and 7mm Rem Mag, it's pretty heavily custom. Um, it's been um, titanium bedded compound, it's had the uh, barrel fluted, um, bead blasted, it's got a custom rail with uh, custom scope rings on it, um, the Vortex Viper HSLR. Um, with a 50mm objective uh, lens on it and 30mm, 32mm um, main tube. Um, it's had trigger lightened, it's had the muzzle brake put on it. Um, it's had the, uh, oh, what are these things, a limb saver on the back. Um, and I can't remember what else, but there is a couple other things that has been done to it. So it's getting up to the stage now where it's capable of shooting out to that sort of thousand metre mark, but I've just got to um, do a load development to suit. I haven't been able to do that just yet. And then uh, the last couple of items on the list are um, mutton cloth. <coughs> so I take uh, five pieces of mutton cloth, one end tied up. Um, it's about a metre long, just over a metre long, maybe 1,200. Uh, and these mutton cloth bags are what I use to put meat into. By using these... Um, I don't know, if, if you saw my last video you would have seen me using these out in the field um, to, to cut up a deer and put all the meat inside. That way the, the meat can breathe a little bit in this and it also gives something for the blood to soak into. Um, and I find that better than putting it into black plastic bags where, especially in the summer, can sweat um, and it's just more chance of the meat spoiling. Um, so I find five of these chopped up is more than adequate for you can get two deer into there. So I've got that and an extra piece of equipment that I'm taking with me on this trip is my uh, walkie talkies because I'm going with a friend of mine. Um, we can have two walkie talkies where one can spot the animal and sit and wait and direct the other one in to go in and shoot. Um, so we're gonna, gonna be using this on this trip. So that kind of wraps it up. For uh, equipment that I take into the bush, um, on, like I said, on a weekend type trip. Um, if there's any question you guys have about any of the gear that I've mentioned here today, just let me know. I'm more than happy to put in um, a, like a quick 10 minute video on, on each individual piece of equipment that you guys want to know about. Um, but yeah, other than that, enjoy your hunting.